Hello and welcome to another YouTube tutorial by Peakboard. In our video today, we would like to show you how to create a digital info board using Peakboard, into which you can insert, for example, PDF files or Excel tables. To do that, I've already begun to build a visualization in the background that will display upcoming events, a PDF containing the current maternity protection laws, accident prevention regulations, and a collective bargaining agreement. After I've set up my visualization, I can get started with the process of adding my files to the resources using drag and drop. Since the Excel table contains all of the events for this year, I want to process them using a data flow so that only the next event is shown. For that, I need to first add them to my resources. Then, I'm going to set up a data source for the date. After I've done that, I can begin setting up my data flow. Here, I'm going to first change the date of the column Start, so that I can filter out all of the events with dates that are already in the past in the next step using Filter by Date column. Of the remaining events, I'm going to use Take Top to select the first one, since this will be the next event, which is the one that I'm going to want displayed. Next, I'm going to add a website to my next event using Web Page Control. Here, a Trello board, for example, or something similar, could be added to the events. After that, I'm going to set up a rectangle which I'm going to lay on top of the web page control. I'm going to use the same process for my PDF files, which I'll pull onto the screen using drag and drop, so that I can position them before again placing a rectangle over them. After that, I'm going to add another two text fields for the last two events. For the first one, I'm going to select the first line as the data source out of our data flow, which contains the next event. For the second text field, I'm going to select the start date of this event. For the PDF files, I'll also create text fields into which I'll enter their respective dates of issue. Next, I'm going to create a new screen that will later be used to display a large view of the website. Here, I'll first create a frame and then add the web page control to it. Besides that, I'll also create a button that will later allow users to return to the home page using runtime dot show screen home. I'm going to lock this button on my screen and select duplicate only locked in order to create a template for my next screen where I'm going to place the law on maternity protections. Here, I'll be careful to give the PDF a name so that I'll be able to address it later with the script. I'm going to repeat this process again for the two remaining PDF files. So that the user can later reach the respective screens, I'm now going to create a tapped event for the rectangles that I made earlier. I'm going to link these over runtime.showscreen over the screen names to the screens. Besides this, it should later be possible to swipe over each screen using a touchscreen or to click through them using a mouse. For that, I'm going to now also create swiped events. I'll start with the swiped left event. For this, I'm going to use current screen index in order to check which PDF file should be flipped through. Later, the next page should be shown in a respective PDF, just as though it were a book that was being leafed through when it swiped left. For that, I'll first ensure that the current page isn't the last page, so whether the page number is smaller than the total number of pages. If this is the case, I'll add a plus one to the current page. If this is not the case, so if I'm on the last page, we'll return to the first page using page equals zero. I'll repeat this process 
for all of the PDF files. After that, I'll create the first swiped right event. Here, we also want pages to turn as if in a book. It should just go backward when swiped to the right. For that, I'm again going to check first which PDF page should be turned and apply the opposite technique as I did when flipping forward. Since all PDFs begin on page 0, I only want to make sure that the current page is greater than 0, rather than comparing it against the total page count. If this is the case, the PDF will be flipped backward over page minus 1. If we're on the first page, we're going to have to turn it back to the latest page using page equals page count. After I've repeated this process for all of the PDFs, I'm done with my visualization. By then clicking on Preview, I can start my visualization. Here, I can now see that all of the PDFs and the website are shown on my home page. If I click on the website, I reach the individual screen for it. Here, I can move around within the website and return back to the main page over Home. If I then click on a PDF and swipe either right or left, the page number of the PDF changes. That's it for my video today. If you like our video, we would love it if you'd leave us a thumbs up. If you have questions or an idea regarding what we can cover in our next video, please just write us in the comments.